Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with Sunday Gold, a new game from BKOM Studios. I was bouncing around on the internet and came across a trailer for this game, along with a one-hour Twitch stream from publisher Team 17 that I'll leave a link to in the description. It looks super cool to me, and I definitely plan to play it, so I thought I'd share some information with the community. As usual, at the end of the video, I'll leave my personal thoughts about where the game stands. If there's something else about the game you would like to know that I do not mention, just leave a comment, and I'll try to get an answer for you. Sunday Gold is a point-and-click adventure game set in a grim dystopian 2070s London. Unemployment and homelessness have reached all-time high levels. A corrupt billionaire named Kenny Hogan has used his mega corporation across ethical boundaries and deepened the dismal state of the city. Three criminals band together to expose Kenny and his corrupt dealings. The game displays a combination of escape room style puzzle challenges, turn-based combat, and RPG mechanics. Every character you control will have a certain amount of action points, and they must be used to do anything in this game, including looking around or picking up an item. When all characters you control have exhausted their action points, you must end your turn, even if you are not in combat. Depending on the place or situation you are in, ending your turn could cause enemies to stumble upon you, which starts a combat situation or it will raise your alert level. Enemy encounters are more dangerous when the alert level is higher. There are also some actions you can take that will reduce the alert level. This means every action you take must be considered carefully. You might walk into a room with a computer that lets you turn off all the cameras in a place where you want to steal something. Obviously, you'll want to spend the AP to interact with that computer, but there are also half a dozen other things in the room you can interact with. If you choose to search them all, you might find more painkillers to restore HP, body armor, or even a first aid kit. But each search will raise your alert status and let enemies know you are there. All characters also have to manage their composure. In Sunday Gold, you will oftentimes deal with the extremely stressful situations, and everybody on the team isn't equipped to handle it. For example, if Gavin's composure gets too low, he might enter the wild card status. In this situation, he will attempt to fight teammates panic, and in general negatively affect the group. In combat, he will also start to see phantom enemies that the other characters cannot see. If these enemies are not immediately attacked, they will hit Gavin and reduce his composure more, worsening the situation. There are consumables that can raise the composure level of your characters, such as adrenaline. A tooltip in the game hinted that some characters benefit from lower composure, but I haven't seen an example of that yet. Each of the three characters you can control are fully voice acted with their own individual personalities. They can equip weapons and gear and come with a unique list of skill categories. All skills can be upgraded to higher ranks to increase the potency of what they do. Every time a character levels up, they will get more hit points and avoidance, which I assume works like dodge. They will also gain two skill points and unlock new skills to put points into. Gavin, the disgruntled ex-employee Dorsey, is a previous employee of Kenny Hogan and claims there are files on his company computer that would be very valuable to Kenny's competitors. He serves as the tech guru of the group. He has the handgun skill category, but the only skill we can currently see is handgun mastery, which increases his accuracy, critical hit chance, and initiative when using handguns. The heavy melee category contains heavy melee weapon mastery, which makes him more effective with heavy melee weapons such as baseball bats. There's also the rush skill, which lets him charge toward an enemy group while swinging wildly. Gavin is the only character with access to the tech skill category, and under it, we can see the hack skill. Hacking is a mini game where you must guess the correct numerical code to gain the access that you seek. Gavin can reduce the AP required to hack a system 
and reduce the difficulty of the puzzle challenge. Next to hack, there's also overload, which can be used to damage cybernetics. Gavin's final category is anarchy, which gives him the skill explosive potency, increasing his damage and accuracy with explosive items, which unfortunately were not shown in the live stream. It also houses chemical cocktail, which lowers the amount of action points necessary for Gavin to upgrade medical consumables. Upgrading a consumable makes its positive effects more powerful while reducing the potency of its negative side effects. Sally, the activist wheeler, has a new legal job as an animal rescuer, but is a long-time criminal. In exploration, she is able to move heavy objects, potentially revealing new routes or gaining access to new items. She serves as the tank, healer, and muscle of the group. Like Gavin, Sally has access to handguns. She also gets the Brawler category, which has the Brawler Expertise skill, allowing her to effectively use fist-load weapons such as brass knuckles. The category also houses Taunt, which attracts the attention of all enemies while increasing her avoidance and damage resistance. Under the Toughness category, she has Strength, which increases her ability to move heavy objects in the environment. Her final category is Medic, and it has the Patch Up skill. This allows Sally to heal a target's damage and also potentially cure status ailments. Next to that is Medicine Potency, which increases the percentage of damage Sally is able to heal when using healing consumables. Quick note before I walk you through Frank Barber's skills. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the channel is enjoying and helps my videos spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. Last but certainly not least is Frank, the vengeful ex-con Barber. He is the leader of the group, the only one who can pick locks, and the most lethal with firearms. His first skill category is Long Guns, and it houses Long Gun Mastery, increasing his accuracy, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage. This category also has Aimed Shot, which is a higher damage attack that can inflict blind or bleeding, while also having a higher accuracy and critical hit chance than a regular attack. Next is the Light Melee category, which gives him Light Melee Mastery, increasing his effectiveness with weapons like the Switchblade. After that, he has the Investigation category, which provides the Lockpicking skill. Lockpicking is a time-based minigame in Sunday Gold, and increasing this skill will reduce the challenge of picking locks, while also reducing the AP required to complete this action. The skill next to it is Observe, which lets you scan the room and reveal all interactive objects. His last category is Leadership, and it houses the Reassuring Presence skill, reducing the negative impacts of low composure and allowing allies to regain composure much faster. Unfortunately, the Team 17 streamer never moused over the last skill, so I cannot share what it is. As mentioned before, combat is turn-based, allowing everyone on your team to take an action, and then all of your enemies will take an action. Attacks are shown in a cinematic comic book style. Weapons can do piercing, slashing, blunt, or cybernetic damage. Different enemies will be resistant or vulnerable to different types of damage. The number next to their health represents how effectively they can protect themselves from incoming attacks. When it's reduced to zero, enemies will take increased damage. When a character has run out of AP during combat, they must choose the guard action. This will reduce damage from all attacks while also restoring AP up to the character's action point surge value. There are also some consumables that will restore AP. All right, so now I've shared the information I have, let me provide some final thoughts. I think this game looks absolutely fantastic and very unique. I know I put in the title that it's Disco Elysium with more violence, and definitely the art style reminds me of that game, but honestly, from watching that Twitch stream, this is its own beast entirely. The only reservation I have is how intense the puzzles could potentially be. This doesn't strike me as the type of game where I want to be stuck in a room for two hours trying to solve a puzzle they have provided very little information on. Other than that though, it looks like an absolute blast. 
Also, you cannot tell from this video, but I really enjoyed the music that played in several scenes. This game has a tone that is conveyed very effectively. Currently, there is no official release date, but the developers have said it will come out this year. The game will be available on Steam, but it's not clear at this time if there will be a console release as well. I will continue to provide updates on this title as more information is released. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.